Hello internet and welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. The place where we enjoy the thought of playing intergalactic dodgeball just as much as the next man. What's going on guys? As per usual, I'll be your disembodied voice Jack Finch as we fire up the interplanetary defence system, hope to high heaven that somebody remembers the launch codes, and curiously ask the question, what if an asteroid hit Earth in seven days? Roll the clip. It's a scary thought, right? After all, we're just a pale blue dot floating around in the cosmic abyss, and there's plenty of space junk just waiting for its chance to build up enough gravitational momentum to take a pop at us and wipe out our existence as we know it. It's happened before, sorry about that dinosaurs, and perhaps, just perhaps, it can happen again. Before we jump into that though, you'll know the drill by now. If you're a fan of this video, interplanetary bodies, asteroids, or just LBQ in general, then be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, so you can stay up to date with our latest and greatest uploads. If you'd like to give us a buzz and say hello to the creative team here at LBQ, head down to the info box below for further details. On with the show. Now, the thought is unprecedented because it's so easy for us to get bogged down in the day-to-day -day living of modernity, and so the thought of worrying about a catastrophic asteroid event just isn't on most people's radar. After all, what could we do about it? Not much, right? Well, what if we had seven days to worry about it? With the impending dread of a mass extinction event, could we as a species do what we're best at? Could we adapt and find a solution? Back in the mid-90s, cinema sort of answered this question for us with a duo of silver screen adaptations of asteroid events. Deep Impact, the better one in my opinion, and Armageddon, which strangely enough were released at pretty much the same time. It's funny how that happens, right? Although Deep Impact probably answered that question with a little bit more clarity. Come on Hollywood, you expect us to believe that Bruce Willis and his ragtag gang of oil drilling cowboys can train to be an astronaut in like, what, a week? The one common causality in both films was that a group of heroic humans saved the day by flying up to the asteroid and blowing the damn thing to smithereens. Job done, rejoice humanity, is saved, good job. But is it as easy as Hollywood would allow us to believe? Let's take a look at what actually happens when a big old rock hits our own big old rock and it's indicative on quite a few factors. Most importantly, the size of the asteroid, the speed at which it impacts, the angle and the landing point. If this hypothetical asteroid is 10 feet across, it'll more than likely skip off our atmosphere like a well-flung river rock and then create a delightful fireworks display in the sky. If it's 100 feet across, then things get a little bit more intense, most likely a massive impact explosion like the one witnessed at Tunguska in Russia way back in 1908. Say it's a quarter mile wide, then an entire region of our planet will likely be devastated and wiped off the map. And anything over 10 kilometers, well, that's when we pray to Odin that the astronaut team haven't accidentally forgotten their nuclear bomb. Else it's lights out, see you later, so long, and thanks for all the fish. Scientists refer to such a scenario as an extinction level event, and that's where factors like the landing point and angle cease to matter. On impact, any living creature within a hundred miles will likely instantly drop dead from the concussion of the compressive wave, or will be completely vaporized much more efficiently than a Thanos snap. They'll be the lucky ones, mark my words, because the survivors will face a fallout of a much more miserable existence. Anyone living near the coast will face colossal waves that reach over a mile high, that gather enough force to travel hundreds of miles inland. Unimaginable earthquakes will rupture worldwide, raining devastating ejections from the asteroid across the planet's atmosphere, heating the Earth's temperature to possibly over 900 degrees, hot enough to melt lead, triggering worldwide forest fires and instantly cooking anyone or anything that isn't lucky enough to be living deep within an underground bunker. But still, those that survived all of this will be the unlucky ones, because planet Earth will face years of planetary collapse. A grey ashen cloud of destruction will blot out the sun, collapsing the planet's entire food chain. Those that remain will live like cavemen, scrounging to maintain in their meagre existence as the rest of the population was lucky enough to shuffle swiftly off this mortal coil. Pretty bleak, right? Yeah, you bet. But come on guys, we've got seven days to solve this impending doom. How do we do it? Well, don't worry folks, because like with most things, NASA has got us covered with the PDCO, the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, whose sole purpose is to constantly scour the skies for any big hulking brutes of rock that would otherwise extinguish our bright light of existence. Any O's or near Earth 
Earth objects are catalogued and categorized by this system. And since its implementation, observers have discovered roughly 25,000 of these rocky villains at a rate of about 500 new entries per year. All of which, we're happy to inform you, pose zero threat to our planet. Great. It's estimated that no known asteroid poses a significant risk of impact with Earth over the next 100 years. Well, either that or they're lying to us, and we better hope that Bruce Willis hasn't forgotten his astronaut training days. Yippee ki yay. Unfortunately, folks, that's all we've got time for in today's LBQ. Leave your thoughts in the comment box down below. If you've been a fan of this video, make sure to leave us a thumbs up and to continue on with your questioning binge, feel free to hit that playlist floating shortly above. As per usual, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching Life's Biggest Questions. Until next time, you take it easy. Thank you